Welcome to this 10-part series on the basics of nautical navigation. In today's video, we'll be diving into Lesson 2 on Direction, one of the essential steps to mastering navigation. Be sure to check out the other videos in the series for a complete understanding of navigating the seas. Welcome to this comprehensive lesson on direction and compass navigation. Today, we're going to break down everything you need to know about understanding directions, different types of compasses, and how to navigate accurately using charts. Whether you're new to navigation or just brushing up, this step-by-step -step guide will give you a solid foundation. So let's get started. Direction is one of the most fundamental concepts in navigation. It's all about knowing where you're going or where something else is located in relation to your current position. To understand direction, we use the Earth's cardinal points, north, south, east and west. North is the direction pointing towards the Earth's north pole, while south points towards the south pole. East is the direction the Earth rotates, and west is the opposite of that. These cardinal points are based on the Earth's rotation and are constant, providing us with a fixed framework for navigation. When looking at a compass, you'll see it's divided into 360 degrees, forming a full circle, each cardinal point, north, east, south and west, corresponds to a specific degree on this circle. These degrees help us describe directions more precisely. Let's start with north. On a compass, north sits right at the top and is assigned zero degrees. It's both the starting and ending point of the circle. Now, if we move clockwise, we come to east, which is at 90 degrees. This means east is exactly one quarter of the way around the compass from north, Next up is south, located at 180 degrees. That's halfway around the circle from north. Finally, we reach west, sitting at 270 degrees. It's three quarters of the way around the compass from north. These main cardinal points are spaced evenly, dividing the circle into four equal 90 degree sections. But there's more. Between these main points are intercardinal directions like northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. Each of these sits halfway between two cardinal points. For example, northeast is halfway between north and east. On a compass, it's located at 45 degrees. Southeast is 135 degrees. Southwest is 225 degrees. And northwest is 315 degrees. Types of direction. Next, let's look at the different types of direction that you'll encounter as a navigator. While cardinal points are a good starting point, they're not precise enough for most practical purposes. This is where terms like bearing, course and heading come into play. A bearing is the direction between two specific objects measured in degrees. For example, you might take a bearing from your position to a lighthouse to ensure you're on the right course. Course is the direction you intend to steer your vessel. It's your planned path. Heading is slightly different. It's the direction your vessel is actually pointing at any given moment, which can be affected by wind, waves, or currents. Course over ground, COG. This is the actual direction your vessel is moving across the surface of the Earth, as influenced by external forces like wind and tides. It represents the true path your vessel is taking, which may differ from where you're steering. Navigational tools like GPS show your COG, making it essential for ensuring you're heading towards your destination, even when currents or winds push you off course. Course through water, CTW. This is the direction your vessel is moving relative to the water itself, without accounting for currents or tides. It's essentially the path your vessel cuts through the water, often visible as the wake behind you. Because CTW doesn't factor in environmental influences, it's useful for understanding how well your vessel is performing in the water or comparing it with COG to identify drift. Understanding both, course over ground and course through water, is critical for accurate navigation. Safety. By comparing your COG and CTW, you can detect and compensate for drift caused by currents or winds, ensuring you avoid hazards. Efficiency. It helps you adjust your steering or power to stay on course, minimizing wasted fuel or time. Navigation accuracy. Using tools like GPS for COG and a compass for CTW ensures you're always aware of your actual position and heading, crucial in open water where landmarks are scarce. Measuring direction. Now that we've covered the types of direction, let's talk about how to measure it. 
For this, we use instruments like compasses. There are two main types of compasses you'll encounter, the steering compass and the hand-bearing compass. A steering compass is fixed to your vessel and is used to keep your course. It gives you a constant reference point for where your boat is heading. A hand-bearing compass, on the other hand, is portable and used to take bearings to specific objects like buoys, landmarks, or other vessels. When we measure direction, we use a three-digit notation system to avoid confusion. For example, instead of saying northeast, we say 045 degrees. This level of precision is essential when navigating, especially in open waters where landmarks are scarce. Understanding magnetic compasses. Let's dive a little deeper into how magnetic compasses work. A magnetic compass uses the Earth's magnetic field to align a needle or card with the north south axis. This gives you a reliable reference point for navigation. Most magnetic compasses are suspended in liquid to dampen movement and make the needle more stable. There's also a more advanced type of magnetic compass called a flux gate compass. This is an electronic device that senses magnetic fields and is often integrated with systems like autopilot or radar. While compact and convenient, flux gate compasses rely on electrical power so they're not entirely foolproof. Magnetic compasses are prone to two main errors, variation and deviation. Variation is the difference between true north and magnetic north. This occurs because the Earth's magnetic field isn't perfectly aligned with its rotational axis. Variation depends on where you are on the planet, and it's usually marked on navigation charts. To correct for variation, you add or subtract it from your compass heading to get your true heading. Deviation, on the other hand, is caused by magnetic interference from objects on your vessel, like metal structures or electronic devices. Every vessel has its own deviation profile, which can be measured and recorded on a deviation card. Regular checks are important to ensure accuracy. Together, these errors can make a big difference in your navigation, so it's essential to understand and correct for them. Magnetic anomalies and deviation. Beyond variation and deviation, you might encounter magnetic anomalies. These are disruptions in the Earth's magnetic field caused by natural or man-made features like shipwrecks or pipelines. While rare, they can throw off your compass readings. Always refer to your charts, which usually mark known anomalies, to avoid surprises. Correcting and minimising errors. Let's talk about how to minimise errors in navigation. To reduce deviation, keep magnetic materials and electronic devices away from your compass. Perform a swing check, which involves comparing your compass readings to known bearings from landmarks. If necessary, use corrector magnets to adjust your compass. When combining deviation and variation, it's best to correct one at a time. Start with deviation to find your magnetic heading. Then adjust for variation to find your true heading. For small errors, you can combine them into a single correction step, but for larger errors, handle them separately to maintain accuracy. Types of compasses. There are three main types of compasses used in navigation. Magnetic compass, simple, reliable, but prone to deviation. Gyro compass uses gyroscopic inertia to find true north. It's independent of the magnetic field, but relies on power. Flux gate or electronic compass uses electronic sensors to detect magnetic fields. Let's discuss the tools used to measure direction on a chart. Protractors. Used to measure or draw angles, helping determine bearings or headings by aligning with the chart's meridians. Parallel rulers. These transfer bearings or directions across a chart without losing alignment, essential for extending course lines. Dividers. Measure distances in nautical miles, transfer them to the chart's scale, or mark intervals along a plotted route. Breton, Schacht Portland plotters, combine a protractor and ruler with a rotating compass rose, allowing precise bearings and course plotting. Accurate alignment with the chart's meridians or parallels is key to avoiding navigation errors, especially over long distances. To wrap up, let's revisit the key concepts we've covered in this lesson on navigation. We began with the basics of direction, understanding how cardinal points, north, south, east and west, form the foundation of navigation. These points, along with intercardinal directions like northeast and southwest, are measured in degrees on a 360-degree circle. 
helping us describe and follow precise paths. We explored the different types of direction. Bearings, which measure the angle between two points, your course, which is your intended path, and your heading, which is the direction your vessel is actually pointing. We also introduced course overground, COG, and course through water, CTW, explaining how external forces like wind and currents can affect your actual movement compared to your intended course. Next, we delved into the tools of navigation, focusing on compasses. Magnetic compasses are simple and reliable, but require correction for variation and deviation. Advanced compasses like Fluxgate or Gyro compasses offer precision and integration with modern systems, but rely on power. Understanding and correcting errors, like magnetic variation caused by the Earth's magnetic field, and deviation caused by interference from your vessel is crucial for accurate navigation. We also looked at the tools used for chart navigation, such as protractors, parallel rulers, and plotters, which allow you to measure and plot directions with precision. By aligning these tools with the meridians and parallels on your chart, you can ensure accuracy over long distances. In summary, navigation is all about combining knowledge of direction with the right tools and techniques, correcting for errors, staying aware of external forces and practicing with your compass and charts will help you build confidence and skill. Whether you're at sea, hiking or exploring new terrains, mastering these basics ensures safe and successful navigation. If you liked this video, make sure to click subscribe and check out the other videos in the series for a complete understanding of navigating the seas.